Can I ask you about love? Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling it, you know, like we're an hour or two here, Lex. Yeah, you feel you're like getting we it. could become besties. <laughs> We're good. We're I feel getting like it. we got a bromance going here, Lex. I, I, I feel it too. I don't know if it's Eric Weinstein level, but I feel like it's close. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the love. But you, we, we talked about the. Yeah. Uh, there's music to my ears. Your whole rant on the the Olympic nature of a startup. Yeah. Is there a role? Like, what role does love, family, friendship play in that? brutal pursuit of excellence that is yeah. building a startup building a company or building any creating anything new in this world such a great question um and and totally unprepared for it <laughs> uh because i know we would ever ask me about that so i think it's why you've 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 got quite a following uh, uh <laughs> on your podcast is that you're able to ask these questions and um I can tell one story because uh you know i don't talk about <laughs> i try not to talk about relationship with elon that often because, you know, he's so famous now. Yeah, I mean, when we met, I used to go out to parties with him and people were like, oh my God, you're Jason Calcas. I was like, yeah. And like, who's your friend? I'm like, that's my friend Elon. He's, and they'd be like, what? He's doing rocket ships? But he's told this story publicly so I can tell it. I, and I would never talk about anything that he hasn't already talked about publicly, especially since he's so high profile, but it was a pretty funny moment. Um, he, there, there was a moment in time when Tesla almost went out of business. And you've probably heard the story uh, many times, but it was during the financial crisis and, uh, they were running out of money. And they said, uh, uh, you know, let, let's go get a steak. And we're in LA and we drove to Boa and I had my orange Tesla Roadster and he had his P1 or P2, like the red one that I think is in space now. Um, and we drove to the valet and we had a steak together and we're sitting there. And I said, you know, I, I read the story in Gawker or whatever, you know, New York Times, you're, you only got like five weeks of money left in Tesla. He goes, it's not true. I was like, oh, thank God. And he goes, we have two weeks. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I was like, well, what's going on with the rocket ship company? Yeah. You know, like, you know, I know you did the one last month, and you, don't you have one coming up? He's like, yeah, we got the third one coming up. I was like, well, how's that going? He said, well, we blow that one up. There's no more SpaceX. I was like, so two weeks of money left in Tesla, and SpaceX, you blew up the first two rockets, you blew up the third, SpaceX is over. He's like, yeah. I was like, I can loan you a couple million dollars. I don't have like a ton. Um, he's like, it's okay. Our friend, beep, <laughs> has loaned me some money. He, yeah. And Elon's been super public about this. I would never tell the story unless yes. he hadn't been. But he, he was talking, and he never said who it was. Uh, but somebody had loaned him money to, to keep him afloat. He was, he was functionally bankrupt. Yeah. I mean, he had the equity in the companies, but the equity was quickly becoming worth zero and the financial crisis. And he's figuring out if he's going to go on vacation for Christmas or not. And he's on the phone trying to, you know, get, um, you know, save the save both companies. And I said, certainly there must be some good news. And he takes out his BlackBerry to date this conversation. There are no right. iPhones. Takes out his BlackBerry and he starts swiping and he says, don't tell anybody. This is what I'm building. And he shows me the Model S. And nobody knew that he was working on the Model S. We knew he was doing the, the Roadster and he was trying to save the company. And I looked at it and I was like, that's gorgeous. Um, it was the clay models. So it was a full-size clay model. So there's human wow. beings standing around mm -hmm. a clay version of this tiny little BlackBerry picture. I'm scrolling through on the, remember that little uh, pad or the yeah, ball yeah, yeah. on the black I'm scrolling <laughs> through it. I'm like, this is fucking great. And I just said to him, it's like, uh, what's the range going to be? He says, well, I think we get 250 miles. I was like, 250 miles? He's like, yeah, I think it'll be the safest car ever. I said, what is it going to cost? He says, I think this could cost eventually fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. I said, Elon, if you make that car, you'll change the goddamn world. You have to, this company must survive because the Roadster is for like 2,000 people in the United States. This car is for every person in the United States. Every single person in the United States needs will want this car if it's $50,000. Yeah. And maybe some of the people who you know, have 20 or $30,000 cars won't be able to afford it, but they'll all want it. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. And he said, you really think so? I said, yeah. So I got home and I talked to my wife, Jade, and I said, do you have the checkbook? She does all the finances and stuff like that, pays every the bills and whatever. And I said, um, yeah, don't tell anybody, Elon's making this great car. And I wrote two checks for $50,000. And I just took out a piece of paper and I wrote E, comma, uh, love, love the new car, I'll take two. And I signed it. I kissed the two $50,000 checks, put them in the envelope, 
and I FedExed it to him yeah. for Monday delivery. And I said to Jade, that $100,000 is going to be gone in 48 hours because it will pay for one or two days of payroll on Tesla. <laughs> so we just added like, instead of two weeks of railway, he's got 12 days. Yeah. And uh, the checks don't cash. But then I read a story that he's closed the money, saved the company in like the next week or two. And a couple of months later, uh, the checks get cashed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. Three years later, I get an email. Your reservation number, it's from Tesla. Yeah. Your reservation number is zero 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 one. <laughs> and then five seconds later, your reservation number is zero 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 seventy three. And I forwarded the number one to Elon. I said, uh, you know, I, I can't take number one, a signature number one. I can't take that. That's yours. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I got five of them. And besides, you're the first person who ordered it. And I was the first person who had seen You're gonna it. You're going to give me to be teary eyed. And then I, mean, I no, it was a very, a it was, moment. it was an incredible moment for both of us. And we talk about it sometimes, uh, you know, those moments in time. And when you, to your point about love, that's Neelon, like the darkest moment, one of the darkest moments in his life, probably. That, that I think it was, I can tell you, it was the darkest period of his life for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. and, and, and he's been very public about how dark that was. And I think, you know, this is why I have great sympathy for the entrepreneurs of the world, like the suffering and the pain. And when he talks about the suffering and the pain that all of these founders have felt, and then we, we're throwing rocks at them and we're criticizing them as they try to change the world and save humanity. And in Tesla's case, I mean, they weren't, you know, they, they weren't like delivering pizza. I mean, they were trying to get us off of fossil fuels. Like this was a big, heady mission to literally save the environment, the planet, humanity. And the way they shorted that stock and they attacked him, it was always perplexing to me why any human being who is standing on God's green earth would want to throw rocks at the guy who is trying to stem the dam of global warming that is about to engulf all of us. How dare they throw rocks at that guy? Yeah. There's so many people you could throw rocks at. There's somebody who's making the jewel vaporizer. Throw rocks at that scumbag, no offense. <laughs> But like whoever's making the jewel things and is, yeah. you know, selling pina colada flavor to 12 year olds, like throw rocks at them. Somebody's doing something, you know, abhorrent, but not E. I mean, and uh, yeah. Anyway, I, that, that car is, you know, up the road here, <laughs> sitting under a cover yeah. with 20,000 miles on it in my garage. Number and then one. the Roadster number 16 is in the garage next to it. And every day I walk by the two of them and I get a warm feeling in my heart because I know E did it. Yeah. Against all odds, against all odds, he pulled it off. Uh, and it, it was that moment, that month in that 2000, I think it was, Jan, it was probably December, January, December of 2008, I think. You know, it's just 12 years ago when you think about it, 13 years ago. It was dark. I mean, it was dark. And they, they almost had the same thing happen, uh, you know, in the Model 3 production yeah. in June of two years, three years ago. And uh, I remember him just trying to get the Model 3 out the door and the company almost crashed then. Most of these companies have, you know, these kind of moments. Um, 